Hi there. Welcome to the Schwoben's Nest. My name is Sandra, and today I've got some beautiful fall farmhouse home decor ideas, and I'd love you to craft with me. Let's get started. I'm starting this project off with this decorative board. I'm going to just use a glue stick and attach this scrapbook paper to the top of it. I'm going to leave the handle black because I like the look of that. And I'm just going to use a glue stick to get the paper onto the board. Once the paper has had a couple minutes to dry, I'm going to flip it over and using my craft knife, I'm going to just trim off the rest of the paper. Where the handle starts, I'm just going to freehand cutting that into a bit of a round so both of the edges meet up and that will leave the handle black. I grabbed two different types of window clings from my local Dollarama store. They usually don't have a whole lot and unfortunately our Dollar Trees don't carry anything in regards to window clings or even stickers. But what I decided to do because this has a sort of a brown background is I'm taking my craft knife and I'm going to literally cut out the inside of this little wreath and then I'm going to go and do the same thing around the outside. I'm going to use a glue stick again to just place down the wreath. That's just going to give it a little bit of extra security, but I am going to give it a good layer of Mod Podge on the top. What I decided to do was take one of the pumpkins window clings. I did trim the edge off of this one as well. And now when I lay it down, look at how pretty that is. It looks so good. I can't believe that this is a window cling. I wanted to add a little bit of wording to this sign, so I decided to cut out the word welcome using my Cricut and some matte black vinyl. I've got it in a curve already, so I'm just going to center it as best I can and then just peel off the transfer tape. I extended the Mod Podge on top of the window cling and all the way to the edge of the paper just to make sure that everything had the same sheen or glossiness or matte, whatever you want to call it, just so it looks even. I'm just taking some of this off-white twine now and I'm just going to wrap a little bit around the handle, just hot gluing it first so it stays in place. I'm going to add a bunch of little mini embellishments, some pumpkins, acorns, some of this greenery. I'm also going to be adding some of the Pipberry garland that you see there from the Dollar Tree. And I've got some of these glass pumpkin leaves. I decided to add one at the end on top of the bow. The ribbon that I'm using for the bow is just this little sort of burlapy ribbon. I did get it on sale at Michael's a while ago in looking forward to the fall season. So it still is part of my stash, but I did buy a couple of extra things this year. So if you like this one, let me know in the comments below because I've got to tell you, I think this one is my favorite today. I'd like to take a quick second and thank all of my current subscribers. I really appreciate your support and your views. So keep coming back. It really helps my channel grow. If you're new to my channel, I would love it if you could hit that red button too. Here on my channel, I go to the thrift store a lot, but I also repurpose a lot of decor pieces that either fall apart because I didn't glue them properly or I just don't like them anymore. So I take it apart and make something new out of it. That's what I'm doing with this one. If you saw the original video, it had one little tray at the bottom and then a windmill on it. Well, that one didn't stand the test of time. So I decided to just pull off that little tray at the bottom and add two of these little wooden crates that came from Michael's. I'm going to add this white and orange pumpkin design onto this little piece and I'm using the same method Mod Podge first and then Mod Podge on top to seal it in really nice. 
I'm using this little wooden garden stake as an embellishment for on top of the crates. The crates have a seam in the center because there's two of them. So I thought this would be a really good way to just camouflage it. I'm using my miter shears to just cut out some arrow shapes on the end just to make it look more like a banner. I'm going to paint it white and then I'm going to add a cutout vinyl piece with my Cricut and it's just going to say pumpkin patch. At the beginning of the summer season, I grabbed a whole bunch of pool noodles from the dollar store and that's what I use to stuff inside of different things when I want to do floral arrangements. They're really nice and sturdy. They don't melt with the hot glue like regular floral foam does and I really just like how sturdy they are. So I glued two of them in here and now I'm going to take all of these little embellishments you see here. I've got some pumpkins, I've got some green and white ones. I'm going to start off with some Spanish moss and what I like to do with the Spanish moss is tear it out of the bag over the garbage pail because it makes such a mess on my desk and I can't stand that. Anyhow, that's what I'm doing right now. You can't see me, but I am ripping it into the garbage pail. And then you'll see me bring some of the Spanish moss and I'm gonna just start pulling it apart and covering up that pool noodle. The other thing that I like to do is take some little pieces of wire and I just bend them into a U shape and that will then just be poked into the Spanish moss and into the pool noodle because then I don't have to deal with the hot glue and the Spanish moss. I am more of a neutral fall decorator. I like the rusty orange colors of the pumpkins and not the bright stuff. But for this video, I am stepping out of my comfort zone a little bit just to add a little bit more of the brighter colors. So for this one, I'm going to be starting off with some of the muted tones, but then you're going to see me add some sunflowers and some orange pumpkins. And I think this one turns out pretty sweet too. The nice thing about using the wires is that if you don't like the way it looks, you can easily take it out and put it in a different spot. I hope you love this one as much as I do. I'm starting off this first project by painting three of these pumpkins black. The reason I'm doing that is the orange one will probably bleed through if I paint it white right off the bat and I want all of them to have the same tone of white. I like to put my pumpkins on a skewer so I can easily hang onto it and then when I'm done painting and it needs to dry, I can just stick it in that piece of foam that you see in the right bottom corner. It's an ugly piece of foam, but it does the trick. I missed filming this part, but I did paint all of the pumpkins with a color called parchment. It's sort of an antique white kind of color. And I just had them on the skewers again and then just made sure that they were nice and dry. Now I'm taking this little basket that I got at the thrift store for $1.99. It has these leather handles and I don't want them. They look a little too big for the size of this basket. So I'm just going to remove them with this little tool. I found this out in my husband's toolbox and I stole it from him. I'm sure he's not using it to pull out staples, but I found that this is a really awesome tool for pulling out staples, especially on canvases and things like that. So what I'm going to do first is take a large bamboo skewer. Now this one is fairly thick and what I'm going to do is just poke it into the top of this bottom pumpkin. I ended up with four here. I decided that for the size of the basket I needed a larger pumpkin for the bottom. So now I'm going to take this skewer and I'm just going to push it very gently through until it comes out the top. And this is just going to help to stabilize my pumpkins and make sure that they don't fall over or fall off. I didn't want to just use hot glue. I'm also leaving a bit of a space in between the pumpkins because I want to be able to embellish a little bit more than you normally would if you stack them all together. 
what I am using the hot glue for is just to put a dab of glue on the skewer where it enters and exits the pumpkins. And that will just make sure again that they're going to stay in place and they won't fall down. I was hoping that I would have some extra Spanish moss because I think that would probably work better with pumpkins, but I didn't have any. So I have told myself for fall this year, I'm going to be working with everything that I have in my stash and I'm going to try real hard not to go to any stores and buy anything new to use. So that's why I'm just going to use this reindeer moss that I have. And I think it turned out really nice with this because the green was a beautiful accent color to the the white. I'm going to take chunks of this moss and glue it in between the pumpkins and kind of try and fill up that space a little bit. But I'm not going to worry about it too much because I'll be adding some other embellishments as well. I'm sure you've already guessed that I'm making a sweet little pumpkin topiary. That's what they're called. So what I'm going to do now is take some of this greenery. I have a bush up in the right hand corner there and I'm going to be taking sprigs off of that. And I wanted the sprigs to kind of fall down on one side. So I'm just going to alternate sides as I move up the pumpkins. I'm also going to make sure that the little strands or the little sprigs aren't sticking out too much. So I do end up taking a little bit more hot glue and just kind of rounding them down and gluing them on top of the pumpkin just so they don't stick out so much. For my pumpkin's little stem, I've got a stick here that I'm just going to cut a piece off of. I'm going to add some reindeer moss first and then I'll glue the stick down. And I cut it where there was a little V in the branch and I just thought that would add a little bit more character to the stem. Once the stem was dry, I took a little tiny piece of these little green sprigs more towards the end of it where it's a little bit of a lighter color and I just hot glued that into place. I want to keep this topiary on the neutral side so I found these little flowers in my stash and I'm going to just glue one bunch of them to each of the leaves all the way up the topiary and then when I get to the top I'm just going to take a little tiny sprig of the flower and add that to the top just so it is a smaller bunch and it looks a little bit better in proportion to the mini pumpkin. Now I'm going to add a little tiny bit of color with these little styrofoam beads. I got these from a garland. Again, it was in my stash. I keep going down to the basement where I have my storage space and kind of going through all the bags of my fall stuff. I'm going to continue to add these and then I'm also going to add some of those little acorns that you see there. Those came from my oak tree a couple of years ago. The acorns have not been able to grow since because the squirrels keep chewing them up before they even have a chance to grow. But I still have quite a few hanging around. So I'm going to use those to add a little bit more of a rustic look to this topiary. Once I had all of the acorns there, there were still a few little spots where you could see too much of the reindeer moss. So I just took a few more little sprigs and added them to the topiary wherever I thought it needed a little bit more filler. So now I've got my basket and I added a piece of floral foam just a little bit bigger than the basket so I could wedge it in nicely. I didn't want to add any glue or anything to this basket because at some point I may want to use it for some different type of decor. And yes, if you're wondering, this craft is a keeper. I am not selling this one. I am in totally in love with how this turned out and this is going to be in my home for the holidays this year. So I'm just going to take these skewers now and dunk them into some of my weld bond glue because hot glue doesn't work very well with floral foam. <clears throat> and now I'm going to just place it where I need it to be and make sure that it's facing the way I want it to face. And then I can just very easily push the stems right into the floral foam. And then once the glue dries, it will hold them in place. 
Next, I'm going to take some of those greenery sprigs and do the same thing. Just dunk the end of them into the weld bond glue and then push it into the floral foam. Now, I decided that I wanted them to kind of hang over the edge, so I just had to flip this one over. But all of these sprigs kind of have a downward bend to them, so it, that worked out really well. Here's how this topiary turned out. I am in love. Let me know what you think of this one. Last year I made this cute little rustic wagon just from some scrap wood and his little handle fell off so I'm going to go ahead and glue that back on. This was so cute and so much fun to make. If I can find the video I'll leave it down in my description box for you but it's pretty self-explanatory. You can kind of see how it was made right here. I'm going to take some tumbling tower blocks and glue two together for the sides and then put one on the end. I wanted to make some little side rails for this so when I add the little decorations on the inside they won't look like they're going to fall out. What I'm going to do now is just stain him. This is a mixture of burnt umber, acrylic paint, and some water. And I'm just going to brush it on and do it as many times as I need to to get the depth of color that I'm looking for. It's not going to be exactly the same as the little wagon, but it's going to be fairly close. And that's good enough for me. These little bottles I got at the Dollar Tree, and I figured since I use this burnt umber as a stain quite often, that I would just go ahead and mix it up in this little bottle, and then I can just squirt it out on my projects. It's not very messy, and it goes a long way. I found this raffia on sale at Michael's. Now I'm going to break my stash rule. I did actually buy this this year, but I couldn't resist it. It was an awesome buy. There were five chunks of raffia in different colors for $5. So a buck a bundle. So I didn't think that was something that I could pass up. Anyhow, I'm just going to lay this down on the bottom of the wagon and I'm not using any glue or anything because once I start adding the little apples, that will hold the raffia in place too. I got these apples quite a few years ago from my mom when she was going through her Christmas stuff and decided that whatever these were attached to, she didn't want anymore. So I just grabbed the apples off of them. I knew at some point I would be able to use them. I have this boxwood greenery that sort of has a lamb's ear look to it. They're kind of dusted, I guess you could call it. So I'm going to give each of these little apples a little leaf. I've got two of the tumbling tower blocks and I'm just going to glue them together. And these are the little ones that you get from the Dollar Tree. I've got a whole bunch of different sizes, but these are the Dollar Tree originals. Then I'm going to take a piece of bamboo stick and you could also just use a popsicle stick and I'm going to glue it onto the back and this will become a little sign for my wagon. I like to make the stick or the stake go up a little higher than the sign because that really makes it look farmhouse and rustic. This was another clearance paint color that I got at Michael's a while ago. It's called a suede finish and I believe it's from Deco Art. If I can find a picture, I'll pop it up here on the screen. I use the same burnt umber stain for the stake. Using a regular Sharpie marker, this is just the regular kind. It's not a paint pen or anything. I'm just going to write out the word apples, five cents a pound. And then I'm going to give the letters kind of these little ticks on them to make them look a little bit more rustic. And then glue the stake onto my little wagon. And this project is done. It really turned out cute. I think it would be adorable on a tiered tray or sitting on a shelf somewhere.
I found some old pieces of shiplap wood at my cottage and I'm taking them to my miter saw just to clean up the edges and make them the right length for what I need for this project. I also found this piece of white wood paneling and I went to my Cricut and I designed this beautiful decal and then I realized because I'm working at my cottage today I didn't bring any transfer tape so that's why you see me trying to find the end of the packing tape and if you've ever tried to do that you know my frustrations. In order to make the packing tape not so sticky, I just put it on my hand. You can also put it on your clothing just to fuzz it up a little bit so it doesn't have quite the amount of stickiness that it would be if it was brand new. I'm gonna go ahead and use that and I'm gonna have to section off my stencil and do each piece individually. But it turned out absolutely fabulous. I'm so happy with the result and I'm so glad that this happened because now I know that packing tape will work in a pinch if you don't have any transfer tape. Since the paneling was white, I decided to flip over these pieces of shiplap and use the raw wood side instead of the painted white side. I'm just putting a bead of hot glue in there and I'm just going to slide in my sign and make sure that it's stuck really well before I move it. I'll do the same thing for the other side and then I'm going to flip it over and reinforce it a little bit more with some extra hot glue. This year for the fall season, I've challenged myself to only use things that I already have in my stash. This was a wheat pick from Dollar Tree. I got it last year, it was left over. And I've also got some other items that I created last year that I know I'm going to want to repurpose and create something new out of them for this year. So you won't see me using any new Dollar Tree items, but I'm going to have some really fun fall decor for you coming in the next couple of weeks. So I hope you stay tuned. Then I added some white rope to the bottom and top of the sign, crossing it over once and hot gluing it in the back. Then I also used the white rope to create a hanger. I probably wouldn't hang this using the hanger, but I think it's a beautiful decorative piece. I'll probably put a sawtooth hanger on the back of the sign just to make sure it doesn't fall. This next project turned out super adorable. I'm so pleased with the result. I have a bunch of old barn wood at my cottage and I decided to create some pumpkins using a piece of it. So I've got it clamped to my picnic table. Very professional here. I'm in my bathing suit and I'm gonna use my jigsaw to start cutting out some pieces of wood. I'm cutting out some pumpkins and I'm going to leave the base at the bottom flat so they can stand on their own. Once I was done cutting, I sanded all the pieces on the fronts and the backs and rounded off the corners a little bit. I also cut some pieces for the middle of the pumpkins. I wanted them to be 3D. So I kind of made these smaller pumpkin shapes. I guess you could say they're more of an oval with a flat bottom. And now I'm going to glue them one on either side of the pumpkins. Then I started to embellish the top of the pumpkins using the items from my stash and then I went outside and grabbed a piece of wood and just glued that on as the stem and I totally love these pumpkins. I think they turned out even better than what I imagined. I also used some of this pipberry garland from the Dollar Tree. That was also something from my stash that I grabbed last year. So if you see it this year, grab it. I love using pip berries for the little tendrils on the pumpkins because they're wired and they work really, really well and look amazing.
I hope you enjoyed my projects today. And if you were crafting along with me, I hope you had a great time. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, the notification bell, and definitely hit that like button if you enjoyed these projects today. Bye for now.